okay, went flat. So I'm stuck on the side of the road. I can see the damn gas station. Okay, see it. And, uh, you know, so, and I'm going to tell you, it was fucking cold outside. It was freezing outside, okay? It was fucking freezing. It was cold. I'm a pregnant woman trying to go to work. Tire fucking blows out, okay? Now, here's something I ask people. Okay, if, you know, where was Jesus when they happened when my tire blew out? I was trying to call, you know, I called N1. I called, you know, my dad, called my brother. My brother wasn't able to be reached, you know what I'm saying? So I called my dad, and I called N1. N1 came, you know what I'm saying, was who I was, you know what I'm saying, came on. Um, he would managed to come down there or whatever. Did you walk down there, or did you? I think he jogged down there. He <laughs> jogged down there or whatever, right? I, I, I was sprinting. I was sprinting as much as I, as fast as I could, but that, the it air was, it was killing it my was lungs. It was too cold. Yeah, it was like, that air was like really cold. It was like fucking, I almost felt like negative down there. You know what I'm saying? So I'm in the car or whatever, uh, and I'm waiting on anyone and my dad and whatever. And I was, I made sure to call the lady and tell her, hey, I'm going to be a little late for work because I have to get another tire put on my car because it blew out and stuff. And so at first, the lady was fine, right? Uh, you know, at the, the credit union, first she was fine. You know what I'm saying? But then I get, um, so, you know, I get word like 10 or so minutes later. This is before anyone and my dad came, you know, because I was talking to my dad, too. And my dad's like, you know, I really don't want you to lose this job. You know, I really don't want you to lose this job because, you know, you just got it and stuff. And, you know, the fucked up thing that happened? What happened was I got the staffing agency to call me like at 9 o'clock in the morning. And they told me, meanwhile, I'm still cold and freezing and everything like that, walking around the car trying to see what, how, how bad the flat is or whatever. And, uh, you know, freezing in my car because I ain't got no gas, so I don't want to turn the heat on because, you know, it's a little bit of gas I got left. I'm damn near on heat, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to do that. So I'm sitting there shivering and shit pregnant, mind you, stressed out, whatever, trying to make the best for bad fucking situation, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, thing is, is that Jesus didn't show up, you know, nobody really showed up for me and stuff, I had to call people I knew, you know what I'm saying, people would say, have faith, what the fuck is having faith if you were a pregnant woman, you out there freezing and shit, and your tire fucking blows out of nowhere, no, what should have happened was, is that I should have been able to safely go back go to work and come back, and then maybe the flat would have happened while I was, like, driving, coming home. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, like, when I just pulled in the flat, went down. You know what I'm saying? But that didn't happen. But, so, I get a, a message from um, a call from ladies at staffing agency, because I'd already told the lady to credit you, right? I already told her about 8, 8 or 4, what happened. 9 o'clock, I get a message from, uh, not a message, a call from the lady staffing agent. She said, well, oh, well, you didn't show up to work, you know, and stuff like that. We got work that you didn't show up to work, whatever. Um, you know, they want to let you go and stuff like that because, you know, they didn't hear from you, whatever. I told the lady, I said, well, I already called this lady. I already called her and told her the situation, what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I already spoke about that I'll be there and stuff. Well, you know, they're, they want to replace you or whatever, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. So I was like, what? I'm trying to make it to work. I got up early. All I had to do is replace the tire and get some gas. That's it, and I'll be there. Right? But they want to fucking replace me. Now, I'm a black chick, okay? So I'm not unaccustomed to things happening to me and stuff. I'm not, una you know, I I'm not the type of person who just, you know, thinks all goods with the world because I know. Because this is one experience that happened while I was pregnant, okay? I've had other experiences of shit happening with my car and shit like that. Me not being able to keep jobs and stuff, you know, I work my ass off, okay? So, this is stuff that happens to me, okay? So much to the point I just kind of expect it, you know? So, uh, and one of my dad come or whatever, and the crazy thing, my dad said he didn't want me to lose the job. What happened? They wanted, you know, they basically fired me, okay? I didn't tell my dad because I didn't want my dad to be let down about what happened. I didn't want him to know, you know what I'm saying? Because I want him to think I'm still doing good, everything's going okay. That's what I wanted, you know, him to think, and that things are going to be okay. And a lady from another staffing agency called me and said, a different one said, oh, well, we got an opportunity for me, so I thought, oh, it's going to be great. That thing didn't turn out later on down the road. It didn't go to work. It wasn't a job, okay? You know, a lot of times, um, you know, good things just supposedly happen, but then they'll bottle out and nothing good comes from it. You know what I'm saying? There's always some bullshit that happens when it comes to me. So, what happened was that, um, 
and one comes first, and one's trying to work on his hair, see what he can do and stuff, you know, to see how bad it is. Then my dad pulls up, you know. And um uh, so, you know, they showed up and stuff and my dad, uh, and Anwan got it on a, a donut and stuff like that or whatever. You know, and they got um they got it on the donut and I think we had to drive back here, right? I believe we had to drive the car back here because this was parked in front of these people's house. You know what I'm saying? Now I'll tell you something. Before they even came, I saw this uh this white couple. This white lady, this white guy and stuff, and they had this baby and stuff. Uh first it was the white woman. She came out and she got in the car, nice new car and everything, and she goes and goes to work. Right? So I was good going with her, okay? And stuff. And she saw I was in the flash, so she didn't say anything, you know, she was just, you know, just noticed what happened and stuff, right? So she didn't really make a big deal about it. Her husband comes out later, you know, so I'm still waiting on him and my dad. And he has a baby, and they get, you know, he puts the, the baby into the back of a, uh, another new car that they got. So they got two cars, and they got a house. And they got the baby, right? So they got all good going with the world. But here I am, seeing the bad end of the shit, where my tire blew out, I'm pregnant, I'm freezing, there's no gas in my car, and I'm waiting for, you know, my dad and one to come, right? So, you know, it's like they said, tell the two cities, you see the good and the fucking bad, okay? But these white people say the good. But I'm black and I'm sitting in the bag. You know what I'm saying? And the funniest thing is I'm pregnant, but they already got a baby. But they doing good. I'm doing bad. You know what I'm saying? Weird how that happens, right? You know, some kind of contradicting about that shit. But, you know, I'm going to keep going. So they come. My dad got the corner donut. And I, I don't think I told anyone that. It's probably why he feels what he does. So... They put the car on the donut, and I drove the car back to uh, back to uh, the house, uh, our apartment. And uh, so we leave the car, parked outside. We get in the car, my dad go get a tire or whatever. And they had to go get, go to like this junkyard to go get a tire and stuff. And this was basically money that we really didn't have. You know what I'm saying? We don't have credit cards, okay? So my dad paid for a little bit and whatever money and why had he used that, you know what I'm saying, to get the uh, flat and then uh, have somebody mounted on the uh, the rim of the old tire that blew out and stuff like that, so that you know the tire would be better, you know what I'm saying. So I have a new tire on the rim rather than the old messed up one that blew out. Okay, so um, so you know, yeah, I got the tire back on the car, but I had at the end of the day, the job was lost. I tried, nothing happened, right? Now, if if all is supposed to be good in the world, and Jesus is supposed to be there to help you and save you and stuff, well, God's supposed to be there to help you and save you, the God of the Bible is supposed to be, then why did I go through that, right? You know, because babies are supposed to be, you know, a blessing from God and this and other, so you, surely you're supposed to have this blessing, you know, where good things happen to you, so I should have been able to keep the other job, right? You know, have everybody treat me well and everything, right? And this other job, you know, that I end up getting, you know, I should have been able to have the people treat me well, whatever. Right? Okay, that, that didn't happen because I got fired from that. All right? Uh, so, you know, so this other lady said she had a job for me. Does this other agency. Uh, nothing came from that. All right? So I will tell you guys what happened. So, um, it's about, I had to wait a week or a week. Um, and then here's what happened on December the 15th. Actually, here's what happened. Um, before December the 15th, what happened is, is that I thought it was normal during pregnancy for you to spot, you know. And so spotting means you have blood that comes out or whatever. And I thought it was normal. You know, at first it was thought off light, but then it, you know, then I saw notice it was like red blood or whatever. But it was a little bit, right. So here comes December the 15th. Okay. Uh, and what happened was, is that... I was at home, I was making a, a YouTube video, and I noticed that I started off being full of energy like I am, you know, in the morning. And uh, I was fine, and I made a couple of videos, but then I noticed as I made these different videos, I got, like, more and more tired, and I was yawning my videos and stuff, and I didn't understand what was going on. And uh, because I had been spotting what I had was a pad on, you know, like a sanitary napkin or pads that, you know, you have during period. So I had that on, and what happened was is that uh, 
I noticed that uh, I was real tired and stuff, so I decided to go and uh, lay down. And I had this damn headache, too, you know, what's going on. So I go lay down, um, and uh, it was like 3 o'clock when I went to go lay down. So I go lay down and stuff, and I had this damn headache. And I was like, man, this headache, what's going on, you know? And it took forever for me to get to sleep. Damn, I think it was like 15 or 20 minutes that made it fall asleep. So, I woke up and I felt the pad was like it would be one period for a woman where it's like blood in it. And I got up and I was like, why is this pad got blood in it? What's going on? It's like a heavy amount of blood in it. It's like, what's going on? It's like period blood. So I go on the internet. I'm sort of looking up stuff. And they're saying, oh, spotting is normal, this and other. But if you have a heavy amount of blood, then that's a problem. You need to go to the hospital or whatever. So I got freaked out. You know what I'm saying? It's about five when I woke up. You know, and I was looking all this stuff up or whatever. I was looking it up. And uh, I was like, okay, I got to go to the hospital. So N1 was going to get home about 6. So I called N1 and told him what was going on. I said, N1, hey, I'm bleeding. Uh, so I think we're going to have to go to the hospital. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, all the while, here I am worried about, I'm, I'm sitting here worried about what's going on with the baby. I don't know what's, what's happening. Pregnant, you know, bleeding. I don't know what's happening. You know, so we, you know, he doesn't wait till 6 o'clock. He comes home early. You know what I'm saying? Because he told his boss about the situation, about me bleeding and stuff. And so he came home a bit early. And uh, then six, like maybe ten minutes before. And so we, you know, got home and we got some snacks and everything. And then we went to, um, went to uh, the hospital. It was cold. Okay. We could not find a parking spot on the lot at the hospital. We could not find it. Everybody was, I guess everybody was there. So we had to park on the off street, okay? You know, and then we had to walk up to the hospital. Walk to the hospital. I was talking about, man, it can't be this many people sick. Walked into the waiting room. All the seats in the waiting room. What the hell was there like, like, uh, 50 or 60 damn seats in the waiting room or some shit? More? And they were all filled. Full. Full waiting room down there. Okay? There was like a couple, like two more chairs left. So me and one sat down. And on the TV, we saw this stuff about some exorcism that was being done on TV. Because on this TV program and stuff. And I was like, hey, one, you believe this shit. They doing an exorcism and stuff. And said in the Bible. It's like, it can't be true. So we sit down. And I'm going to tell you. So it took about two hours for me to get called. You know what I'm saying? After I thought I was there. Because at first, when I got there and got went up to the desk, I was like, no, should I be here? Should I be here? You know, I don't want to wait a long fucking time because I was damn people. But I, we decided to stay now. I was like, well, you know, you should stay and see what's going on. So then, you know, two hours go by. Okay, after I got there, finally called me into the, uh, the room where, the, you know, the nurse is, you know, where they do triage and shit. So, happened was that, uh, I go into the room where the nurse is, and I tell her, I'm like, I'm bleeding. You know, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I'm pregnant, I'm bleeding and stuff. You know, now the fact that I had to wait two hours just to go into the triage is ridiculous because I'm bleeding. I'm losing blood, right? When she got up, I saw a pile of blood Yeah, on, my coat. on her coat when she got up. So, yeah. I mean, at the time then, but it I'm was a, a small pile of blood. Go ahead and explain it. So I went into the nurse's um, <coughs> triage area and stuff, and I was like, telling her I'm bleeding, whatever, and stuff. And I'm like, I'm pregnant, you know, what's going on, what's going to be happening, and stuff. And she's like, okay, well, you know, they go through the regular test, you know, just have your, you know, squeeze, put the thing around your arm and squeeze the damn thing or whatever, take your blood pressure or whatever, or get your pulse and shit, you know, and stuff. And, you know, then she tells me, oh, well, we're going to have to take some blood from you. So... I'm thinking, oh, she's just going to do that little stick, you know, you prick and take it out, you know what I'm saying? Just to, you know what I'm saying, take a little bit of blood. But then what happened is this lady ended up putting a fucking sharp around my arm, like for to put in like an IV in my arm. I'm like, what the hell she put in like an IV thing? And then at the end of it, it's like where you can put the uh, thing for blood, like a, a like container a vial. For vial for blood. Yeah. So she put it, she's like, okay, this thing going to hurt. So she, uh, so the IV thing is right here. She put the needle in my arm and stuff. I didn't want to look because I don't like looking at needles going in my arm and shit. So, you know, because we go to the doctor, it's scary. You know, you don't like feeling, you know, you see pain, you think it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt. So she put the needle in 
to my arm and drew out some blood or whatever and stuff like and there was a needle with the IV or whatever the hell I guess or whatever and then she took the needle out and then it was something where when you put the vial into the whatever the thing is where they're taking the blood out from the IV thing then it just lets the blood run out or whatever into the vial easy so you know I was kind of confused about what's going on this lady took not one vial this lady took three fucking vials of blood while I was in the triage area, okay? And then I'm like, well, what's going on? You know, I'm worried about my baby. You kidding me? I'm sitting there worried, and I'll tell you, when she stuck me with the damn needle for the IV, I felt pain in my vaginal area, down where the womb should be at. I felt pain down there, like there's something wrong. So I'm freaking out about, you know, my baby's okay or whatever. I'm trying to find out what's going on. I'm like, well, you know, surely they should be doing some damn thing because I'm pregnant. You know what I'm saying? And I was in a hospital. Christian hospital, okay? I was in a Christian facility. So surely people have professed their babies or get from God and this and other. So they should have been, I shouldn't have been going to triage area. I should have been going back to a room. But, of course I didn't. So they sent me right back out to the waiting room. And then I sit down. And then, uh, you know, I'm going in furious where I'm like, she getting I'm cold. bleeding. Like I'm, I'm holding like, her hand and rubbing her forearms and her hands the whole time. And she's getting colder and colder by the hours. And I said, please go tell them you're getting colder. And yeah, I'm bleeding and, and stuff. Bleeding. Still bleeding, she yeah. went to go to the bathroom. She There was a a puddle of blood. Yeah, I'm And then that. she came back. And then when she finally, you know, then yeah, I told we'll her. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll go ahead. And then I told her, you know, she came back. We waited some more hours. Yeah, we told the, and I went up to tell the people that and then I was pregnant. Yeah, when she yeah, went up to tell them that. She's up there. I'm looking to see what's wrong. And the the puddle of blood is like it's like that big now. It's it's more and more and more. Yeah, as the hours go by I'm bleeding more and more and shit. So, um In a Christian hospital. Yeah, in a Christian facility it's supposed to be about life and Jesus. Christianity. And the baby's a gift from God and she they know she's pregnant. They know it. She already told them that. Yeah, and they had, they they had been in the hospital to confirm that I was pregnant. When I said I found out I was pregnant, that was the hospital I went to. So, uh, what happened was is that uh, I went up there and told them I was like bleeding, I'm getting cold and stuff, and they're like, okay, let's take it. Uh, take you know, they went to uh, do my blood pressure, and they found out that my you know blood pressure had dropped by a few points and stuff, and they was like, oh, well, your blood pressure's dropped, but you know you should be okay, whatever. You can you know continue to wait or whatever. Now, I'll tell you what the horrifying shit was that when we was in our wedding room. There was another girl. What what happened to that girl with the, the whole blood thing? What happened to her? They were sitting her in the arm room. just started breathing, just started bleeding all over the fucking place. All down her arm, it just started. Yeah, her IV, it was a bunch of blood came out and stuff. And she said, Excuse me, you know, came up to the desk. And she was blood coming out of her arm and stuff. And I'm like, Damn, that don't give a fuck about people because this chick, her IV, blood came out of her arm and stuff. And they didn't give a damn, but as long as she was waiting and stuff, she should have been back in the room. But still, no, nothing's moving. No people are getting seen. You know what I'm saying? Nobody's Man, getting seen at all. This is a Christian hospital. Ain't Jesus supposed to be having his Holy Spirit moving around, touching people, helping people out? Yeah. But, you know, and I had a friend that was there, um, you know, my senior while she was there, and she was sick, and she had been there since 4 o'clock. And we going on about, what the hell, 8? We going about maybe 8 or 9. You know what I'm saying? Because we got our six. And it's like, you know, I don't know what the hell time we, we went finally went back. After, I, I don't know. It was like, uh, like, yeah, was I 11? think it was like 12 or something. It was like 11 or 12 when they finally got a room back there for me to go back to. So I'll tell you what happened. So I go back, they give me a room. I sit there or whatever. They have this, uh, the, you know, hospital bed and stuff. And they got the TV and everything in there and stuff. And, the cabinets and all that stuff. You know, a real hospital room. So, and want to sit in the chair. So, the lady's like, okay, well, you can change into this uh, hospital gown. And I said, okay. You know what I'm saying? But I knew that I had the bloody pad and stuff. I'm like, well, you know, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this bloody pad or whatever. She's like, I'll just take it off, whatever. So, I go to uh, take off my pants. What happened when I took off my pants was is that the pad was full of blood. 
okay? And I was surprised the pad was able to feel that because I had an overnight panel, so I guess that's why I was able to keep, you know, stay, whatever. Now, while I was in the waiting room, I didn't know that I was passing clots or blood clots or whatever and stuff, and we'll show you what it looks like. But, um, so I took off my pad, and then right when I took it off, something fell out. That was the, my vagina. That was the most. That something was the bloody most had fell part. out. Yeah, something bloody had so fell maybe. out uh, of you know <coughs> it fell out of you know my vaginal area. Something had fell out, and it was all bloody and everything. And I was like, "What is that?" And I was like, "Damn, they're screaming and everything else, screaming my head off. Like, what's going on? Because I'm pregnant, I'm bleeding and everything and stuff." And Lady's like, oh, it's, it's okay, you know. And so it was something. She said, oh, just leave it there or whatever. And so if somebody had bled a lot, you know, people can only lose so much blood before they die, right? So I had been losing blood for like five or six hours. So, and I'll tell you, I'm actually somebody who, I'm, you know, I, at times, I could be anemic, meaning that it's not good for me to lose a lot of blood. You know what I'm saying? Because that's basically my life force of blood leaving out of my body to the point where I could be dying. And I'm getting colder and colder and colder because, you know, if you after you lose so much blood, your body temperature goes down, your blood pressure drops and different stuff like that. And I'm pregnant, right? right? But I'm worried about more about the babies, you know, than I am by myself. So, thing dropped out, it's bloody and stuff, and uh, I changed into the gown. And then, um, the thing was is that I accidentally stepped into my pad and I had blood on my foot, you know, on my feet, and I was walking, and I had blood on my feet, my own physical blood, the blood that I'm a pregnant woman, losing all this blood, you know, and I stepped in my own blood, and it was so much blood that, and so thick that it got on my pants legs, too, I had on black pants, and it got on my pants legs, you know, so much blood, and he's past his class and stuff. And, uh, so, you know, the lady left, whatever, and, uh, I'm just like, what the fuck is happening? I'm in this hospital, nobody's answering any questions, nobody's concerned, or whatever. Uh, but for those of you who don't really know what was happening, what was happening is a miscarriage. Uh, this was something where my body could not deal with all the stuff that had happened, me being gone off on by the dude, the car blowing out, me losing a job, the other job, and stuff like that, despite whatever the hell I did. Where was Jesus? I mean, ain't God supposed to be fashioning the baby, protecting the baby the right. whole time? Ain't he supposed to be doing that? It's supposed to be a gift from him. Ain't he supposed to be putting a soul into the baby? Now, I got something to read after this about that. So, uh, so what happened is, is that I'm still bleeding, you know what I'm saying? And they had me put on this pad or whatever, this pad to suck up the blood is still bleeding and stuff. And, you know, the experience is like, you know, they wanted to, they ended up doing a, like an ultrasound and stuff, you know. And uh, what had happened when they finally did the ultrasound, like before they did the ultrasound, the lady told me to go to the bathroom. So when I was went to the bathroom for the ultrasound, you know, before she went and looked in to see what was going on with the rest of the baby or whatever, I went to the bathroom, I had to go pee. And, pee, and then what happened is something else came out. It was something, some tissue like uh, stuff came out, you know. And I was like, and I saw that it fell out. And I knew what that was. The thing that fell out was basically the, the body of the, you know, the baby that was forming. And it was a piece of it. The other part was a piece of it, too. And to confirm that that was, in fact, the baby that it fell out, I got the ultrasound. I told the lady, well, something came out or whatever. She's like, oh, I'll just leave it over there or something. And I put it in some tissue and I put it in my a coat. And I looked at that part of that tissue and I knew that tissue was the baby I was carrying. I'm not shitting you. I'm not fucking joking. I'm not saying anything of the sort because I'm on a serious motherfucking face right now. That I knew looking at it that that was, that was the baby that came out. That was the final piece of it that came out. 
to confirm it, the lady did the ultrasound. She looked at, it was like 30 minute ultrasound where she had to use the stick thing and go up and stuff. And it was very painful and stuff to do the ultrasound. And she found that there was nothing left. It was clean. The thing that I just lost was the baby. The blood that I was bleeding was my baby's blood. That was my baby's blood. You understand? That was my baby's body that fucking fell the fuck out in a Christian fucking hospital where people are supposed to fucking care, right? Where the fuck is your Jesus at when I'm sitting here bleeding this shit? The thing is, is that what I found out later from his mom was, is that losing too much blood, I could have fucking died. So where the fuck is your Jesus? Where the fuck is your Christianity at? Hmm? Where's it at? Where the, the Christian, the people at the hospital are supposed to care about babies and shit? Where the fuck is that? Nowhere, right? It's no fucking work. You know, I just had somebody on Facebook fucking unfriend me because I put the fuck them on fucking blast when I said something about what the fuck they follow. You know, about women not speaking in church. Right? And told her the truth about it. But she wanted, oh, well, you know, just want to be fucking closed minded. Right? You know, and I said, okay, fine. You know, she unfriended me and shit and said, God bless. Bitch, you be blessed. Okay? You fucking be blessed. Right? Now, people will ask me, you know what I'm saying, after I went through this miscarriage, well, what did you do? Why didn't you, why didn't you tell your family? Why didn't you just net? What support was I going to have? What fucking support was I going to have? I'm sitting here bleeding and shit. And these people with the deaths didn't give a fuck. They didn't give a damn. It's a Christian fucking hospital. I was a mother, damn it. I was a fucking mother carrying a baby. You understand? But, oh, well, people go in church going, oh, well, you know, God moves in mysterious ways. Things happen and shit. Fuck you. All right? So, okay, I don't give a fuck what you going to tell me about me being in a Christian hospital, me being pregnant and stuff, them professing they love babies and all this other kind of shit, and I miscarried, and if I would have got, you know, if they would have gotten me sooner, I may not have been, I may not have lost the baby. Right? But, guess what? I did. Right? I could have lost my life as well as it lost its. You understand? So there'd be two of us then. But, you know, so many people walk around with this Jesus shit, this Christianity shit, trying to fucking say justify shit. They trying to justify. They don't know what the fuck they following, what it means, nothing. They have no fucking idea what the fuck they follow. You know, you following a guy in the Bible who kills millions of people. Who's sitting here going to have 43 children fucking mauled to death by two fucking bears because the kids call a preacher baldy. You know what I'm saying? You got people who are on fucking social media and they Christians they ain't fucking supposed to be there. Why? Because. They're not supposed to be there because it says in the Bible you're not supposed to associate with, you know, idolaters, drunkards, any, th any person of sin. But guess what's on Facebook? A bunch of fucking sin. So you got a lot of Christians going fucking cloak and dagger on Facebook, putting up this image, trying to make themselves seem holier than thou, right? Like the girl who went front of me. She's trying to make her ass seem holier than thou. But the fact is, is she hasn't been hurt by it. It ain't got to her ass yet. But, oh, it'll get to her. I ain't got to do nothing. The God of the Bible will do it for her. Look at all the people in the Bible. That's the reason why people don't want to open up the damn book. Because they're too scared about it and they fearing God and shit like that. But they go into church and giving their money because they think they're doing something. Right? So, I miscarried. I didn't tell my family because, you know what I'm saying? I knew, like, you know, it was a it, it was a period of, after I left the hospital, I got, uh, actually, I forgot. Um, that I had pictures that I took that I said was graphic of what happened. So you guys can know I'm not bullshitting you about the supposed, you know, Christian hospital. So yeah, I'm not bullshitting you. I think I have to take the, let me uh, turn the thing down so you guys can see because our camera is kind of crazy. So he's going to show you the pictures of what it looked like. Can you see? Okay, so if you can see that, uh, like, bloody like thing. So you see that bloody uh, whatever? Hold it up, honey, so they can see it. Hold on. Oh, wow, that's dark. Um, so, so, um, this is, so this is what came out, 
You see that bloody pool right there that's in that cup or whatever? Um, that's a part of the fetus. That's a blood clot and part of the fetus that came out of my body after I took the pad off or whatever, which they put into a cup or whatever. And and one and I uh and one videoed it. You know what I'm saying? See that? That's a part of a baby. In blood. Okay? So I'm not fucking shitting your ass about any of you Christians. I'm not fucking shitting you about the fact of what I went through. I'm not shitting you. Okay? About what happened. You see that track on the floor? That's blood. There's blood on the floor. There's that that was on the floor. That's a clot. That's another clot that came out. Okay? Look at that bloody ass fucking pad on the floor. That's my fucking pad on the floor. Of me fucking bleeding. You understand that they got this on the floor and everything. You see that shit? You see that? And people want to say they Christians and they want to say, oh, well, this and that other and God will bless you and this shit, right? That's what they want to say. Okay? Now, I understand it's a little dark, but I just wanted to show y'all, you know what I'm saying? That's the blood clot and the fetus that came out of part of the baby's body. Okay? That came out of my body. This is the blood clot that was on there. This is what I meant by saying this graphic. Sometimes with people, you got to show some fucking grotesque ass pictures. Sometimes you got to show shit. You saw my pad that was full of blood that I was seriously sitting there in. Bleeding, getting colder and colder by the minute. Um, and so, you know, I mean, I'm not shit. This is this, this what happened. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think, I don't know if I got any pictures. But, uh, that took my phone. But, I'm gonna take you one step fucking better and see if I actually got, still got the motherfucking pictures. I'm gonna take you one step fucking better and see because, you know, and I don't know if I, I don't think I have them any, I don't think I, I probably don't have them anymore because I think I took them off because I was sharing, um, I think I was sharing with somebody, um, uh, so, hold on, let me see if I got it. Okay, so, let me see. So, hold on, let me see. Um, so, let me see if I can turn it up a little bit so you can see it. No, stupid piece of shit. So, um, I don't know if you can see it, really. Let me turn it down a little bit so I can. So, on the floor, there's my shoe. Um, if you can make it out, there's some blood on the floor that I stepped on. Uh, when I stepped out the bed, I got blood. There's some bl blood right there on the floor right there. Um, there's my shoe right there. Um, and uh, there's a little bit more blood right here on the floor. So basically, I stepped in my own blood, essentially, with my own feet. Um, now, if you can look at my pants, if you see that brown shit right here on here on my clothes, that's not dirt. That's blood. That's blood that was so thick on my uh, on my pants to show how much that I was bleeding. Okay, so I showed proof, pictures, something that a lot of Christians don't want to show, don't want to see. But sometimes you gotta see the fucking pictures in order for you to really realize what the fuck's really up. Okay, so you know. It is what it is, you know what I'm saying? It is something. And after I after I came home, then uh, what happened was is that um, I uh, where is after I came home, um, I was pretty weak and stuff like that. So uh, they gave me a shot, a rogue shot, because I'm a negative uh, blood type. And so uh, after I came home, I got sick, um, and uh, I got this cold out of nowhere. Um, and I don't, I'm not the type of person to get sick, not even from shots, you know, I'm not even that type of person, so, you know, I don't know what happened in the hospital, but I think they did something, uh, gave me something, I don't know what the fuck it was, they said it was a shot to help me, but I don't think it was, because I ended up getting sick right after that, uh, feeling like shit for the next couple of days, I'm still bleeding and stuff like that, um, they tried to take more blood out of her, four bottles of blood, but... Oh her yeah, body, visit. Yeah, her body refused to give them more blood. Like it just it stopped giving blood. Yeah, so that means by the time your body holds on to blood while you're in the hospital, 
after I gave three vials and they told me to get the other vials of blood, they said, oh, well, that got old. Um, we're going to need some more vials of blood. I bet it did get old after fucking four damn hours. Well, four, it was like five or six hours, yeah. Of well, the first, well, you was, we was there for two hours. After the first two hours, they took your blood. We was there for another four hours and we finally got seen. Yeah. You finally got seen. <laughs> well, we didn't leave, you know, we didn't leave until, uh... Until one. Well, yeah, we, no, we didn't leave till four. What? We didn't leave till four in the morning. Because I remember looking at the clock and it was like four in the fucking morning by the time we left the hospital. So, so we was there from, we was there from six in the afternoon all the way to four in the morning. Oh shit, we're so sad. Okay. And... You know, M1 doesn't like to see blood, because to him, if he sees blood, it means somebody's hurting, it's something really bad, you know. And so, you know, a lot of people in my family, they may not have known that I miscarried. I didn't tell a lot of people or anything about it. But this is basically sealed the deal for me about Christianity, with the whole thing about them caring about, not caring about the kid, not caring about me as the mother. You know what I'm saying? While I was sitting there at the hospital, I was aghast as to the fact that they haven't sit so damn long. It's like they want you to kill her and die or something. You know, in the waiting room. You know, I hadn't heard from people that in hospitals, you know, you got people who got bully wounds and they still sitting out in ER and shit. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, as a mother, I think it was ridiculous. You know, and I miscarried and stuff. And I told you this happened on December 15th. Now, this is something that happened What's the holiday that comes in December? Christmas, right? Where they celebrate Jesus' birth and all that shit, right? Well, I just miscarried a week before Jesus' Jesus' birth. Right? So if it was supposed to be a holy damn month, why did I miscarry in that month? You know, not a lot of people gonna have an answer for that. Okay? But anyone does have something he's going to share with you about um, about Christianity and about you know what people are going to try to say to justify it or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So it says a lot of people like to give their own interpretation of what God is, and they say that God is the creator of all everything in the universe, existence. God created us, and you have to look at reality, look at facts. We know that we all come from our mother. Our mother and father came together to create us and gave birth to us. Nowhere in this process can we prove there is a third party involved as far as our creation. When you start to put it in terms of the Bible and of religion and this God creating us, it doesn't fit with what we see in reality. So example, when you have a mother carry a baby for nine months and that baby dies before it is born, it dies three days after it's born, it makes you think, what is the point? What is the purpose of that? And a lot of Christian pastors and church people will say sick and disrespectful and heartless things like God did this to the woman to give her some kind of trial or tribulation or something for her to go through because this is sick and crazy to treat a woman or mother to be to be like this. Okay, because when you think of this God being a rational, understanding God, why would you go through all of this to create a baby that you are not going to allow to survive three days after birth or not even be born in her case? So it doesn't fit that you have this all-knowing, all-loving, seeing, caring God that would do such a thing as far as create a life, put it into a woman, for it to not even happen. Just to have the baby die just before it reaches a week old. The Christian's pastor of the church says you can't comprehend what God does. God works in mysterious ways. But this sounds like something to every other logical, rational person that is crazy and psychopathic. I only got a little bit left. And at the same time, if a man impregnates a woman and he murders that woman or does something to the woman to cause the baby to die, he is thrown in jail because by the logic of the court system that is supposed to be put in place by God and is supposed to be following the laws of the Bible, by the logic of the court system, what he did was wrong. Nobody is going to say that God made that man kill the baby. God made that man do something to the woman because God works in mysterious ways. People are going to look at him as crazy and psychopathic person. Yet, when a baby dies suddenly and there is nobody to place the blame at, but God, her case, 
the person who supposedly put it there, the person who is supposed to be responsible for the life and deaths of the people on this planet. A lot of Christians, pastor churches say God is the reason why you live, he is the reason why you die, and your time is on God's time. So we can subscribe everything that happens to this guy. A baby being killed in any capacity, supposed to go back to God. In any case, supposed to go back to God. In any case, God's supposed to know all, so why would he allow this woman to be impregnated, knowing the man will kill the baby before it's born, or kill her and the baby before it's born, so it just doesn't fit as far as believing or having this all-knowing, all-seeing God that is supposed to be creating people on our planet.